What is up, YouTube people? I am back with another episode of For My Culture, and I am reviewing Van Jess's latest release, 2021 project, 2021 project, Homegrown. As y'all can see, it is a beautiful day outside. The wonderful melanin is shining all over me, and I feel the vibrational energy as it's coursing up and above my veins. Yes, look at it. It's so bright! It's bright in this bitch! And I can feel it all over me. But let's get back to the review. Oh man, this project right here, it was a little bit disappointing. And I'm gonna tell you why. So Van Jess, these, this group, this group, this duo makes the music that I think needs to be pushed in the funk or R&B industry just a little bit more. Or at least be pushed a little bit more to the mainstream crowd just a little bit more. But, I will say that I think that this project is good for what it is and for what it pertains yeah. to. So based off the first track, Come Over, I really enjoy this track. It's nothing too over the top or nothing to really think about. There's nothing really constructive to break down about this type of project here. This right here is classic fucking music. This is the music that you play when you got a chick or you got a dude and y'all really like funk, y'all fuck to the funk. That's what this is. That's exactly what this is. There's nothing else more, there's nothing else less. That is exactly what this project is. This personally was the sound that I thought was gonna be overall projected throughout the whole project. Now, it kind of was, but it kind of wasn't at the same time. The gripes, I'm gonna get into it early, but the gripes I kind of had with this project was, it was a little bit too all over the place. It was too all over the place for it to just be a certain mood album. It was, it was just, it felt off. There was something that was missing from this. Come Over was a great intro track and I really liked that track. And then the slow down track, the next one, um, it had the, the, um, what's that old track? Where it has that saxophone sample? Rump Shaker, Rump Shaker, I had that Rump Shaker sample and I really did enjoy that. And the beat was nice, it was not funk. It was not R&B, well it was R&B, but it wasn't funk, it wasn't soul. It was just a more updated, modern R&B track. That's kind of what anybody else can do in the R&B industry right now, that type of track. But I really did like it. And I will say this, like their vocals are great. The, the girls, I don't know their names personally, but the group, they're good singers, don't get me wrong. But um, that track, it just felt, it was a great track, don't get me wrong, it just felt like anybody in the music industry can make that. That's not nothing that special. And that's when we get into the next part of the project. And this project is only nine songs long. The thing is, if you're coming out with a short release project, there is always and should never be no room for error. And unfortunately, this project had a lot of room for error. Roses was when we started to get into the part of the project where I didn't, I didn't really care that much for the production. It's like the production kind of slipped off from the first two tracks. It got a little bit more mellow and it got a little bit more dry. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like the change up. And then the content started to get a little, on Roses, the, this was the only track on the entire project where the content was a little bit different than what they was talking about throughout this whole shit. Then this time on Roses, they was talking about how, I guess the sneaky link is now being updated into a relationship status. And that's basically it. It's nothing too constructive, nothing over the top. It's just that simple. But the fact that that content from just that track alone is more, is more than the other content from these other tracks, which is basically the same repetitive ass shit. That, that, that's kind of, but, but that's okay. It's okay because this album is not really meant to go over your head. It's, it's meant for a, uh, a certain exact mood. And that's fucking, that's about it. So I wouldn't think too hard about it. I was thinking too hard about it on the first couple listens I had, but it's not really nothing it's nothing too over the top. It's just a simple, basic, formulaic project that basically anybody could have came up with. And that was kind of the disappointing part for me. Then we get into Curious with Jimmy Tense and Garen. Um, I noticed this a lot with the project and I'm gonna get into that later, but Curious, it was cool. That's when I started noticing like the production started to get a little bit dry. 
I didn't really care about what they was talking about anymore. The vocals was still great. Everybody that sung on this shit, the vocals was there. All the features and Van Jess, of course, obviously. The vocals was fine. It's just everything else around it just wasn't interesting enough to keep my attention. So I didn't really care for that track. Now, Dysfunctional. You know what? Let me let me bring it out a bit. Dysfunctional was weird because this is the K Tronada produced track. Everybody that knows me knows I fucking love K Tronada. K Tronada is the best producer in the game. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. K Tronada is the best producer in the game to me because his sound is just original. Nobody else, if anybody else does a K Tronada type beat, obviously you're biting from K Tronada. If anybody else does that type of production style, you're obviously biting from K Tronada. So that track right there was, I heard this track way before the album got released, which is why it was confusing on this album, was because I didn't even know that they was adding it to this. I thought that this was a uh, single from way back, but they added it to this and it shocked my ears because I, I don't look at the playlist, I don't look at the track list when I'm listening to the project. So it just shocked me, I thought it was my ringtone. Cause yes, by the way, this track has been my ringtone for the past year now. So it was just like, oh, I thought somebody was calling. Nah, it was a track on the album and I was confused. And I didn't, I love the track individually, but on this project, it felt dysfunctional. It didn't feel like it belonged in the album. Patronata's gonna always come with that funk. This track was too funky compared to the rest of the album. It was like, it, it, it would match Come Over and it would match Caught Up, which is the next track I'm about to talk about. It would cat, it would like match those tracks when it came to production. But the overall feel of it, it was like, it was like the mood is here and then dysfunctional is all the way up here. And it's like, whoa. And then it brings back down when you get to high and dry, which I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that one. But yeah, I really like dysfunctional. Don't get it twisted. It's just in the, in the project, it didn't fit. It was just, I wouldn't say it was, a good idea to put that track on the album. But I don't think this is too content based, so it didn't even matter really. This really felt like a playlist. It didn't really feel like an album. Anyway, the next track, High and Dry. This track was very dry. <laughs> it was dry. The production was dry. The content was dry. The, the, the lyrics was dry. Like I noticed something relatively common with this project when we got to that track. No, 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 I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to that, that idea later on the next track. Caught Up, and we got to Caught Up with Phony People. Again, great vocalists. All the vocalists on this track did their thing. It's just the content, like the hook is so corny. It's so corny. I'm caught up, I'm drowning from you, rescue me. Oh, like it was very, very disgustingly disturbing to keep hearing that hook. I thought the content was just so basic. And that's what I really thought a lot of this project was, but it was just the content was so basic. Yes, I get it. It's not meant to go over your head. And I'm not, if it sounds like I'm intentionally shitting on it, I'm really not. It's just, I don't know, with a group like this, these are, this is obviously a creative group, like a creative duo. So I just expected more. I don't know if I, I didn't listen to their previous works. So maybe this is just the music they do, but I don't know. I was just, I thought they'd take this kind of funk thing that they're doing. And it's not all the way funk, but I thought they'd take their funk elements and like do something more high tech with it or something. I don't know. I just, I didn't, I didn't care for it. Caught up, it, it brought me back up again with the production. Um, it was a little bit more upper pace, higher pace, excuse me. And you know, it was groovy, but the content, the, the lyrics, it was just, it just wasn't, it wasn't good. And then Boo Thing, oh my God. Boo Thing was probably one of the most wackiest, corniest things I've ever heard from any R&B artist, any R&B artist. This track did, the, the lyrics was so elementary. It was basically just giving different synonyms of boo or bae or that or this and that. It was so corny and it was so disturbingly corny to listen to. I was like, oh, I don't know who Devin Morrison is, but he did his thing. It's just the lyrics and the content was basic. It was very basic. <sighs> yeah. And then the the biggest fold I thought on this entire project was the fact that 
you made a remix to the very first track when it kind of and it was like you start over from already nothing and then you go back to nothing it was over repeat track it was like i could have just played the first track twice you didn't have to make the come over again i didn't need it again because it was basically you talking about the same thing again and yeah how do you make a remix worse than the original like it's your own track <laughs> i didn't like the beat i didn't like the slow flow i didn't like the I did catch the Cameron, the Cameron sample they was doing with their vocals. Um, you know, ooh boy. I, I did catch that. It was cool, it was a little refreshing, just a little bit. But I didn't I didn't like the track. That track was I didn't I didn't need it. I don't know why they added it. I thought they could have really ended with Boo Thing. As much as I didn't like Boo Thing, I think it would have made more sense to end with that. The come over again shouldn't have been a track. I'm sorry, I just don't think that should have been a track. And once again, if this sounds like I'm shitting on this project, I'm really not. I'm really trying not to. It's just, it was just, I've heard better. I've heard this type of music done better in the past by other artists that I didn't even expect to put too much thought into a lovemaking project. I just... I don't know. I don't think I really like returning to this. Like I, I can listen to it over and over again. Like it fits the mood. It's a come over type of vibe. Like it's a, it's a sex album. It is what it is. Like I feel the vibe and I get it. It's just, I don't know. It's just something was missing. The, the content was too repetitive. The lyrics was too basic and I don't know, these girls are great singers, but I just, I can't see myself really enjoying this project as much as I already do now. And that's not saying a lot because I probably, if on a scale from one to 10, the mood of me or my emotions during this project, listen, it's like a four. And that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be because I love R&B grind music. And I especially love funk, especially when you add funk elements to an R&B album. And I feel like, there could have been a lot more direction and a lot more experimentation with this type of project. But once again, I haven't checked out their pro their previous work. So maybe they've just been doing this type of music, it's been working for them, and that's good for them. But me, I don't think I'm a big fan of it. These girls are great, but I'm not a big fan of it. But yeah, that was my review. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out the Instagram at 4myculture, 4.my.culture. And hit me up in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about this project. And if you're a fan, just fan. And let me know if I'm like missing something or if I'm wrong or I overreacted a little bit too much to this project. But I don't know. It's just, I don't know. But anyway, I'll catch y'all later. New episodes coming later.